So now we, let's talk about intrusion prevention. So how do we prevent? Now before we talk about the, uh, the, the digital intrusion prevention, let's talk about in real world. Uh, in, in the real world, we have something like this, right? So for example, this is a building. Yeah, this is a building. So how do we secure a building, right? So for example, we have um, somebody to monitor um, and this is called the Intrusion Detection System, IDS. Uh, and what is this? This is a, a, a camera, a CCTV, all right? Surveillance camera, or maybe we call it the IP camera, okay? So this is the, uh, the equipment that used to detect, okay? Now remember, this is detect, and it might, it might not be able to prevent. Uh, then we have something called the security hardened room. This is something like our, you know, just a special room here, you know, and the, the security guy will be sitting there and uh, observing, uh, oversees the uh, all the cameras and things like that, you know. Um, and uh, we also have something called the monitoring room. Yeah, this is where the security management center. Um, and we also have something called the access control system. Right, so in the physical world, we have, if you want to access to a certain uh, places or to a certain floor or certain rooms, like some of the uh, hotels, they have the uh, uh, restricted access. Now, if you stay at uh, seventh floor, you are only permitted to access seventh floor. You're not uh, supposed to enter uh, eighth floor, for example. Okay, so you can actually, uh, they, they are all controlled by this, this piece of card. Right, so if you want to access the uh, the door here, you have to swipe the card, and probably you have to uh, prof uh, provide your fingerprint as uh, second authentication, or maybe your iris scan, and etc. etc. Maybe face recognition, things like that. Okay, uh, this is for access control, and uh, we have a door. You know, this door is uh, something like a a firewall. Okay, now if you fail to to provide your identity, or maybe your identity has been uh, vogue, then uh, therefore you cannot pass through this door. Okay? Yeah, maybe you talk about digital doors and things like that. Um, so the door will not open if you are not the right person. Okay? Um, then, um, okay, let's talk about the uh, security guard. You know? Yeah, so security guard is somebody where constantly uh, move around uh, in, uh, in our premises or maybe the office. And uh, they are the one that tries to detect. Uh, is there any vulnerability? Any anyone suspicious that walking in our building, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we have the uh, secure transaction uh, encryption VPN tunnel. Okay, this is like a, a van, a truck, an armored truck where we carry our secret information or maybe our cash from one place to another place. Those are the example of uh, in the, in the real world. Okay. So next we talk about digital, okay? So in, in, in the digital world, we have something called intrusion prevention system, okay? Now remember, there's another term in, in, the, in, in the market where they call IDS, right? So IDS stands for intrusion detection system. So detection system means uh, the system can only detect, but it cannot prevent. And this is IPS. So IPS is an intelligent intrusion detection and also prevention product. As well as detecting intrusion, it also prevents and terminates uh, intrusion behavior uh, using certain ways of responding, protecting, and uh, the information system in real time against substantial attacks. So IPS can be deployed in the following modes. Uh, first, we can deploy IPS uh, using the offline mode or maybe the inline mode. Now, offline mode doesn't mean the uh, IPS system is offline. Uh, basically, offline mode means we can actually ask the switch to perform what we call port mirroring. Any traffic that passes through the port uh, on the switch, uh, it will actually send one copy to this IPS. So IPS is actually sitting uh, not in the, in the middle of the way uh, during the traffic between the firewall and the user, okay, or maybe firewall and the internet. Uh, this is the opposite, okay. Inline means IPS is actually deployed uh, in between the traffic and it had to perform real time scan, okay. Alright, so let's talk about some of the technical features of IPS. Um, so, IPS has the feature of real time attack blocking. Um, they can actually 
uh, detect real time attack. A good IPS system can actually tell, can actually recognize this traffic is actually an attack. They can recognize the attack traffic and therefore they can uh, totally deny the, uh, the access. Okay. Uh, zero configuration to go online. Okay. So this is for easy configuration. Service awareness. Okay. Service awareness is a, a feature which is very important. Uh, for example, uh, today we have so many different applications that uses HTTPS as the, the port, the protocol, as the means of communication. So service awareness basically means uh, the, a good IPS should be able to differentiate between the traffic, let's say for example, uh, Facebook versus Google, or maybe Facebook traffic versus Twitter traffic, or maybe uh, versus WhatsApp traffic, you know, all this traffic uses HTTPS. So a good IP should be able to recognize by the uh, fingerprint. Uh, Self-learning and self-adaptation. So this is actually um, a good IP system can also learn the pattern of, of a user behavior. Let's say, for example, if a company that they constantly uses maybe like Google Drive or maybe Google Email. So to them, this is a, is a norm. But some other companies, uh, let's say accessing external website, Google, or maybe uh, any search engine out, out of the company is not is prohibited, right? So uh, we can actually train the IPS to, to recognize what is good and what is bad. Uh, and also we can uh, define the rules, okay? This is the one that we mentioned. You can define the based on the rules. Um, so this is actually uh, uh, a screenshot from the USG um, and if you look at the logs here yeah this is a logs we have so many different types of logs traffic logs we have the threat logs URL logs operation system logs and this is a, a, a example of the uh, threats uh, logs alright so this example we have uh, the threat types intrusion the risk is low and this the thread name is uh, Cisco Common Services Framework and then here you can see um, where does it come from yeah uh, so it's actually detected by this policy called the untrust to trust um, application HTTP and uh, it is actually categorized under intrusion and under attack intrusion and uh, is recognized by um, by our IPS. Say this is a uh, something to do with Cisco, and uh, a attack category is uh, XS, XSS, uh, the uh, cross script. Yeah. Um, and from where, from where, and to where. Now, sometimes when we look at all uh, the threads like this, and uh, if we want to whitelist this, yeah, yes, we can do that. Uh, we can also whitelist. If uh, this this thread has been uh, uh, mis misunderstood uh, by the IPS, uh, so IPS thought that this is the uh, one of the thread, and maybe sometimes this is something that uh, we used to use every day. Okay.